Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at a really interesting floor function integral problem. And I've done one of these before quite recently on my channel, so if you enjoy this you can go and check that one out. And although we're going to approach both in the same way at first, actually we're going to end up solving very different problems. So let's have a look at what we're dealing with. We're looking at the integral from zero to infinity of the sum from k being equal to the floor of x, where x is the variable that we're integrating with respect to, from the floor of x to infinity of 2 to the negative k divided by k plus 1. So let's try and get our head around what the problem's actually asking us. Firstly, we're integrating a sum, which is odd. And the only x that we can see here is within the bounds of the sum itself. We're starting at floor of x. And so we've got to find a way to rewrite this that makes more sense to us. And it's going to involve a similar approach to what we used in lots of floor function integrals. And it's in noticing that we can split this integral from 0 to infinity up into the integral from 0 to 1, plus the integral from 0 to 2, plus the integral from 2 to 3, etc., all the way up to the integral from n to n plus 1 as n approaches infinity. And why would we want to split it up into bands of width 1? Well, it's because within the bounds of n and n plus 1, where n is an integer, we know exactly what the floor function of x will be. It's always going to be n. Because what we're really looking at is a segment of the x-axis between two integers like so. And of course, as a reminder for anyone who doesn't know, what the floor function of x does is it truncates a number. So it, it rounds it down to the lowest uh, nearest integer. So, for example, the floor function of pi would be 3, the floor function of e would be 2. It just chops off the decimal point, essentially, unless we're dealing with negatives, but that's not something we have to worry about here. So, in between n and n plus 1, any value of x is going to get truncated down to n. And that means that we can write our integral as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity because, of course, we can add up our integrals in bars of width 1, of the sum from k equals n, because floor x will equal n within this, these bounds, to infinity of, I'm going to move my 2 to the k down because it's a negative exponent, 1 over 2 to the k times k plus 1 dx. Now, you might notice that actually everything within our integral now does not depend on x, so we can pull it out. And let's do that. So this is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the sum from k equals n to infinity of 1 over 2 to the k times k plus 1 times the integral from n to n plus 1 of 1 dx. Now, of course, the integral of 1 is x. And so all we have to do now is evaluate x between n plus 1 and n, which is essentially just doing n plus 1 minus n, which is just 1. And so what we found is that all of that integral was just a setup to lead us to this. This is the real problem that we're looking at now. So this is quite a big step. So we're going to make some space on our board and we're going to rewrite this at the top because this is the real problem that we're solving. It's the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the sum from k equals n to infinity of 1 over 2 to the k times k plus 1. So I always think with sums that look as complicated as this, it's good to write out what we're dealing with. So let's think about what the first few terms of this is going to look like. Well, when n equals 0, we're going to have the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the k times k plus 1. So that's the first term in our sum over here. The second term is, of course, when n equals 1. And that's going to be the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the k times k plus 1. And, of course, our next one would be when k equals 2 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the k times k plus 1. And we would go on adding like this all the way up to infinity. So we've got to think of a way to process this information. And what I'm going to do is define two things that I think are going to help us do that. I'm going to say that s is equal to the sum that we're looking at, the sum from 0 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the k times k plus 1. And I'm going to say that s of n is equal to the nth term of the series s. 
And now I'm going to try and rewrite what we've got up here. But I'm going to do so using multiple colours. So this first sum we're denoting in pink, this second sum we're denoting in green, and this third sum we'll keep in blue. So, our first sum is just equal to s, because we've defined s as this sum. But our second sum isn't so simple. Our second sum is almost s, but s starts from 0, and this starts from 1. So, it's s, but without that term that starts at 0. And again, when we look at this sum over here, this is also s, but without the term that starts at 0, and without the term that starts at 1, because we want to start at 2. And you might see the pattern that's starting to emerge. It's that we're adding s each time, and we're subtracting s0 here, and then we're subtracting s0 and s1 here, and on the next one we, we would be subtracting s0, s1, and s2. So we're getting somewhere. But I'm not quite satisfied yet. And I think the best way to write this out, to really show what's going on, is as follows. Let's represent this first sum as what it truly is. It's starting at S0, and it's adding S1, and then it's adding S2, and then it's adding S3, and it's adding S4, and it's doing that until we finally reach that term right at the end, which of course is never truly reached. How about this one that starts at 1? Well, the only difference is that it doesn't have S0, which we just wrote before. So if I want to represent that, I know it's going to have every term that my first sum had, but just without the first one. And similarly, with my sum that starts at 2, I'm just going to be missing my 0th and 1st term, but have the same everywhere else. I've just noticed that I've ended up swapping colours, so sorry if that was confusing. So let's see what the pattern is, because it is right in front of us now. For the zeroth term, how many of them do we have? One. For the first term, how many do we have? Two. For the second term, how many do we have? Three. And for the third term, you can see we would have four. And for the fourth term, we would have five. So really what we're saying is that within our sum from k equals 0 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the k times k plus 1, we want to have 1 of the 0th, 2 of the 1st, 3 of the 2nd, 4 of the 3rd. In other words, we want to always have one more than the term we're on. And the term we're on is k. So we want to have k plus 1 of each of our terms in our series. And this is where we have our breakthrough moment, because that, this is the, the one line that summarizes what we've been looking for in solving this sum. And it's a beautiful one, because we have that great cancellation there that we can do, since we have a k plus one on the top and the bottom. And of course, this is just equal to the sum from k equals zero to infinity of one over two to the power of k. Now, this is quite a well-known result, so many of you may know that this is equal to 2. There's a few ways we can get to that without just knowing it. First of them is that this is a geometric series with a common ratio of a half and a starting point of 1. And of course, we all know that 1 over a half is equal to 2. Another way we could do it is with a geometric picture. We could start with the square of area 1 for our first term, because of course when k is 0, we have 1. Our next term is adding a half, after that we add a quarter, and then an eighth, and a sixteenth, and a thirty-tooth, and a sixty-fourth, and you can see as we go, it's approaching two filled squares with an area of two. So I hope this has been an interesting integral for you all, and if anyone wants a challenge, you could try evaluating this sum here just on its own, just the sum from 0 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the k times k plus 1, and comment your answer below, because while I was trying to solve this, I ended up doing it, and it didn't actually help me in the solution development in the end, but I thought it was a nice problem in and of itself. So, thanks for watching. Please comment with any ideas or suggestions for what to cover next, and it's been great to gain all the subscribers I've been getting recently, so keep engaging and keep 
letting me know what you want. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. Bye.